Hello everyone and thanks for joining. Today I'm going to show you how you can make this beautiful bag. Uh, for this bag I use 2mm rope yarn. Um, one of these bowls is around about 230m in length and I needed approximately one and a half of them. Um, but it depends on how long you would like to have your bag handle. Then I used this uh, twist lock. You can open it like this and back feet on the bottom they are optional of course then you need uh, d-rings for the sides and uh, for the handles i use these small uh, i don't know the word for them but you can see what i used <laughs> so we start with the magic ring and five stitches This one doesn't count. One. Two. One. Three. Four, and five. And it should look like this afterwards and you should be able to pull a th the thread easily to close the ring. And it should look like this. Then you make a chain, chain stitch and turn. So the pattern will always be the same now. Make two stitches in the first loop, then one stitch on the sides of the triangle, two stitches in the last loop and three in the in the top one. So it will look like this. And you always use the one thread only. One, two in the first loop, then single stitch in the side. This is the top loop. Make three stitches here. One, two, and three. Now we are on the side again. We need to make one stitch. And we reached reach the end of the row and make one and two stitches here. Again, you close the row with a chain, chain stitch before you turn. Now we start to see the triangle or V-shape that we want to have for our back. And the pattern will always be the same now. You always use only this loop for the stitches. And you make two stitches in the first and in the last loop of every round. Three stitches in the top one and single stitches on the sides of your triangle or V. And you close every round with a chain stitch and then turn around. So for your orientation, we are currently here. This is the magic ring that we made with the five stitches and we are now working to the sides of the back. One of these V-shaped rows consists of two um, rows of normal stitches. So for the back, 
I made two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve rows of normal stitches. So as soon as the back reaches the size that you like, we switch to the vertical pattern and repeat it until the back reaches the size that we like. Um, since we are working in this V shape, please be aware that the tip of the V shows you the, the height of your back. Which means that for my part, this part is 24 centimeters long, but I changed the pattern at this row, which is round about at 17 centimeters. I think it becomes a little bit clearer when I show it like this. So this part shows you, this height shows you the height of your back. And as soon as this height reaches the size that you like, which is 24 centimeters for me, we change the pattern again and fill out these little triangles that remain on the sides. So we reach the size of the back that we like. And before we go on with the vertical pattern, please make sure that the bottom of your triangle is in one line and that you have an equal number of stitches on both sides. For me, it's 23. So I closed the row already with a chain stitch. And now switching to the vertical pattern, we go on like follow. We pull the thread through the first loop, through the second. And now there are three loops on our hook. And we pull the thread through all of them. It should look like this now. Now we go on with the normal pattern. So you go on with the normal pattern until you reach this side and there are two loops left. Please stop there. <clears throat> I reached the end of the row. There are two stitches left and we go on like this. We pull the thread again through the first loop, through the second one. We have again three loops on our hook. Pull the thread through them. And now we close this stitch and turn. Now we again pull the thread through the first hole, through the second one, pull it through all three loops. And without closing this stitch, we go on with our normal pattern. So I reach the end of the row again. There's there are two stitches left and I'm going to show you this turn again. But before I do that, let me explain you this. So here you can see this is the part that I just showed you and I'm going to show you again. These are the three loops that we had on our hook. This is the loop that we made when we pulled the uh, thread through all of them and this one this one over here this top loop was done when we closed this whole stitch I show you that because it this is important we have to work with this loop in a later stage of the tutorial so please make sure that you always close this stitch let me show you again 
go on like this. Pull the thread through the first stitch, through the second one. You have three loops on your needle, crocheting hook. Pull it through and then close. So this is the important stitch. Now you turn and go on like this. Pull it through the first one, through the second one, through all three loops and you don't close this stitch but just go on with a normal pattern. Now you go on with this pattern until the back reaches the size that you like. Um, for me, like I already said, it's 24 centimeters from this magic ring until the tip of the V. So I reached the height that I want to have and already crocheted this whole row and stopped two loops before the tip one. Close up, you can see here. This is the one you use to make the three stitches in. And to go on with the pattern, you need the two loops before the one in the very top. So the pattern is actually the same like we did before because we're gonna pull the thread through the first loop. Through the second loop. Now we have three loops again on our hook. Pull the thread through all of them. Close the stitch and turn around. Now we go on like before. Pull the thread through the first loop, through the second. We have three loops on our needle, on our crocheting hook. Pull the thread through all of the loops and go on with a normal pattern like we did before. It should look like this now. Since it might be easier to see, um, I'm going to show you again with this light yarn what you have to do. So assuming that this is the height that I want to have, I crocheted this row until the end and stopped two stitches before the top stitch. So this was the one where you used to make three stitches and we are going to make the last stitches of the row in this one and this one. So we're gonna pull the thread through the first one, through the second one, so that you have three loops on the needle now, crocheting hook, sorry. Pull the thread through all of them close the stitch and turn. Now again pull the thread through the first loop, through the second loop. We have three loops on our hook now. Pull the thread through all of them and go on with the normal pattern. will look like this now.
this is the part that I just showed you. And I finished this whole row, made the turn here with the normal pattern and would go back up with normal stitches until I reach this one. Then this one and this one are the ones where you pull through the thread in order to make the turn again. If you go on like this, you will notice that the rows get shorter and shorter and you will get this triangle shape that we want to have. As soon as you reach the tip of the triangle, it should look like this. And I'm going to show you how you will finish the triangle. So I crocheted the, the last row here with a normal pattern, already made the three loops here and now I turn and again I pull the thread through the first stitch, through the second one, then close stitch and you can see there's one um, loop left and then you reach the last two loops of the row again. That means that you make one normal stitch and then do the pattern again. Pull it through, then pull it through. You have your three loops. Close and turn. Now there are only three loops remaining. So we go on, pull it through the first one, through the second one, got your three loops again on the hook and now you would just make a chain stitch through the last one like this and through the loop that's on your hook. So I just cut the thread, melt the yarn end with a lighter and pull it through. So the, this tip is ready now, the triangle tip. I'm going to show you how you can start this side again. Like you remember, for this row we didn't use the tip of the V but the first loop to its right. In the same way we don't use the tip now but the first loop to its left and this is the one where we pull the yarn through then we make a chain stitch and we go on with our normal pattern and start the left triangle. So. As soon as the second triangle is also ready, we make one row of normal stitches all around this part. In order to make one round of normal stitches, I will start again at the magic ring, pull the yarn through that through it and then go on with the normal stitches. In this round we will have two different patterns of loop, loops that we will need. The ones at the bottom are different from all the other sides. So in the bottom you will use always this loop
and this one for the normal stitches. It's a little difficult, like you see. This one and this one and make normal stitches and on the other sides I already told you that this loop is very important because we make two normal stitches through all of them and then always one normal stitch in the middle between them in this loop and then go on with two normal stitches, one normal stitch, two normal stitches, one normal stitch, and so on. Your back should look like this now. In the end of the round, I just cut the yarn and sew it in. Now we're gonna start a new row and we have to check where we will start. You take measure with your lock and you should um, be aware that the tip of, of this V should be placed in the middle of your lock and you don't start next to the lock but you have to keep in mind that it will close around the yarn in the end. So take the measure like this. The tip of the V is in its middle and you start you don't start right next to it but go a little inside and start there. Now you start the next row by using the loop in the back again. Make a chain stitch and go on with the same pattern that we did here because you now make normal stitches in the back loop. This is the back loop and normal stitch. In this way you go all around again until you reach the other side of your lock here. I reach the other side of the lock now and in order to turn around I will make a chain stitch here like this. Then turn around and go on with the normal pattern of normal stitches that are done through the back loop only. Through the back loop and normal stitch and through the back loop. In this way, you will get the same pattern like we have here for the side. You repeat that until you reach the height of your lock. As soon as you reach the height that you need, you make a row of, of chain stitches and connect the both sides. It should look like this now. Now, in my opinion, you get the best result if you cut the thread here, sew it in and then start again with a new row in the bottom of the back. Afterwards, you go two further rounds in the normal pattern again. I can show you here. In this way, you get a very even row here and you can hide maybe some not so nice stitches in the back of your bag. 
that was part one of my tutorial. If you liked it, please like and subscribe for my channel. And in part two, I'm going to show you how you can make the rest of the bag and this handle.